Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm really, really excited to get back into Arkham Horror, the card game. A game which I have neglected for a little bit due to the Gloomhaven craziness that was the Kickstarter campaign for the second reprint. Really, really excited to get back to this. Now, for a bunch of you guys that were part of the channel uh, before Gloomhaven, the Kickstarter, I had already actually played through a portion of this scenario. And actually what I ended up doing was removing those videos because I only had gotten through about two or three of the videos of this particular scenario, which is the second one in the core box called Midnight Mass. Now the reason I did that was because uh, the Gloomhaven Kickstarter kind of came out of nowhere and I tackled it so quickly. Uh, I didn't really want to start mid-game again. I thought it made more sense to just start clean, start fresh. And also I picked up a few things in the meantime, like I got this new play mat, which I think is extremely cool. Just adds a lot of, uh, you know, just look, it just looks amazing. And I also wanted to set up the scenario a little different so it looks a little nicer. I've got kind of like the graveyard over here in the corner, uh, East Town over here, the North side up here, downtowns in the back in the center. Uh, we got Rivertown in the middle and then uh, our house of course which is still standing from the previous scenario So for those of you that watched all the way up until like the hand management card management video Everything's still the same uh, the things the cards we purchased are still the same I really am just redoing the midnight mass scenario. Uh, we've got Southside right here Miskatonic University right here and st. Mary's Hospital in the back uh, the cultist deck which we're going after in this midnight uh, our Midnight Mass scenario is right here, so we'll be pulling those cards as we need them. Of course, our Act and Agenda decks as we always have, and then of course, uh, the Wonderful Encounter deck. Uh, we've also got uh, Roland Banks deck here. I've got a tray, an Uber Stacks tray here for my cards as we put them up and draw. So I'm kind of excited about this one. We've got Roland Banks here. He's already got his five resources ready to go. And really, we're going to jump right into this. So obviously, Roland's right here next to his house, uh, which, which he was in uh, from the beginning. So just before we flip that and start talking about what's inside of his house, uh, I am going to go ahead and read the agenda and the act deck so that we can get up to speed on the scenario for those of you who didn't uh, know what was going on in this scenario prior. So this one here is the uh, agenda A card and we have to read this in terms of its uh, text in order to find out what is going on in this scenario. It's called Predator Prey. It says Lita. Now Lita was somebody who was inside of our house in the past scenario. So if you aren't uh, familiar with her, you can uh, rewatch the first playthrough that I had of the Arkham uh, Horror card game, you'll be able to get yourself familiar with who she is, but she seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you too are being hunted. Now, one option we have at the very bottom of the card, and we can do this as an action, is to resign. And you don't want to risk taking too long so you head to safety with the information you've gathered. Now, this whole scenario is all about trying to uncover as many cultists within the city of Arkham that we possibly can. We have all these locations where we possibly can go to find and, and kind of uproot these cultists, but uh, knowing this scenario from playing about halfway through it in the last video, uh, you know, things change and, and they may just randomly show up. So. There'll be a lot to keep us busy. So this is the uh, this is the agenda deck, and obviously, if the agenda deck is moving forward, um, you know this is this is us essentially. Uh, now, this is the one that would end up getting the doom tokens put on it as it moves along. Then we've also got um, kind of an act deck. Now, the act deck is is essentially our deck versus like the enemies or mythos deck, essentially. If you from Speaking that correctly, even though I don't think I am the the act deck here and I'll read this one so you guys can understand because this is really for us We're trying to advance the act deck I guess is what I was trying to say and the agenda deck is trying to be a uh, to be advanced by doom tokens Which many of you are familiar with who are playing this game those of you who haven't played it yet now you are hopefully So what we have here for act one what we're supposed to be trying to do in this scenario is called uncovering the conspiracy and the text here says, you have one night to find the members of this cult and un unveil their plan. Uh, the more members of, your, of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. So as an action, the investigators can spend two clues per investigator. We are playing solo, so we're just using Roland Banks in this situation. Oh my gosh, look at the focus there. We're just using Roland Banks. 
We can use two clues for Investigator as a group to draw the top card of the Cultist deck. And of course, at that point, it'll show us where it's supposed to be dropped. And so the objective for us is to find as many unique Cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique Cultist enemies in the victory display, you advance. Note, not all six of them are in the Cultist deck. So we've got that deck, I've sleeved them in gold there. Those are the ones that are gonna be coming out as per a scenario cards is what they're listed at for the play math purposes anyway. But those are where the Cultists are gonna come from. We Once we get two clues, I can spend those in order to, for us to you know advance things and hope, and hope for the best. So I've gone ahead and I've set this stuff up already. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead with our starting, I guess our starting cards and things like that. So according to the game rules themselves, uh, and I just wanna make 100% sure here that I've got everything set up correctly, because I believe I do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and draw our opening hand. And at this point, we just draw five cards. So my sleeve, my cards are sleeved here, and I've sleeved them in black, because I mean, it is Arkham Horror, so it's gotta have a little bit of darkness to it. So we're gonna go ahead and flip these cards and see what we get. So we got ourselves a manual dexterity as one of our very first cards. So this is a, uh, max one committed per skill test. If this text is, uh, test is successful, you draw a card. And of course, it's got uh, those two emblems up top here in the corner that we can use to boost that particular skill. I'll put that in my tray. Just so you're aware, this is Roland Banks stats going across the back here. And again, these are different in between games like Eldritch Horror, Arkham Horror, uh, all this kind of stuff, and even Mansions of Madness. They keep changing the lingo and the wording on these things. Uh, but for this particular game, the one there in three, uh, the blue one here, so this one right there, is your willpower. This one here is your intellect. Uh, this one here is your combat. And this is here is your agility. I do apologize if I go through it and call it boot, fist, book, and face, or you know whatever else you wanna call it. Uh, but essentially, those, the terminology in those change per game for the most part. Uh, the Roland Banks also has something that happens uh, after you defeat an enemy, you discover one clue at your location limit once per round. So that's really nice. If we also get an Elder Sign when we pulled from the Mythos bag, um, then we're gonna go ahead and add one for each clue on the location. So that can also help us out. We'll see how that comes into play. So let's keep pulling our cards for our opening hand. We've got Manual Dexterity. So we're gonna pull for our second card. We got Hyper Awareness. So hyper awareness is going to allow us to spend a resource to get one um, one of the intellect, uh, you know, boosts, or we can spend one resource to get one on our agility. Agility helps us with running away from enemies and evading them, and we've also got them up there to use and boost our skill. So we'll put this here, and then we're gonna grab our third one. Hey, that's not bad, Elder Sign. This was a card we actually upgraded from the previous video, so the in-between, uh, we essentially got this one. This is actually really nice because it gives us a massive sanity bonus. You'll notice there's a four. So we can put this into play and it's going to give us a huge boost. It it's, uh, goes on our character as a neck item uh, and we can only have so many of uh, certain items, of course, in play. Excuse me. And uh, we've got, yeah, so it's, it's just a really nice card. And of course, if it's got the question mark there on the left, it means it can be used for any type of... Um, of these types of things we want to boost uh, if we decide to use it for just what's up in that corner. But yeah, it's a great card and it also gives us a, lot, a nice bump in sanity and knowing Roland Banks, that's perfect. That would get him to like a 9-9, which is nice. So we'll put that in his hand, that's good news. Uh, first aid, that's never bad. So first aid's a great card, uh, use three supplies. So we use this kind of like as a counter and if, if the first aid has no supplies, discard it. And so you can actually use it as an action to spend one supply to heal one damage or horror from an investigator location. So this is really good for this particular scenario knowing that we will probably be taking damage as we go along. And for our fifth and final card, we get dodge. So dodge is obviously, in a, in a, it would be an agility type action, uh, but also seems to give us some willpower advantage there as well. It's a card that we can use fast, so we can play when an enemy attacks us and uh, an investigator at our location, and we can actually just choose to flat out cancel the attack. So fast cards are a little bit more exciting that way because if we do get under attack, I can just drop it down, we can play it, and we can uh, avoid something nasty from happening. So let's go ahead and kind of kick off the very first round of this craziness. We've gone ahead and read those cards, so we're good. So of course, with the game also has, as most of you know, a really handy uh, action or reference card here to show you all the different actions you can do. You're allowed to take three actions per turn. You've got your round sequence, and obviously, because it's the very first round, we're gonna skip the mythos phase, so that's not gonna happen just yet. Uh, so we'll just jump into the investigator phase, which is for investigator to take and perform three actions. Now, before we do this, um, Two things I want to know. One is, 
Uh, we are playing on the standard mode. So standard mode has these particular three emblems that can come from the Mythos bags as stating these three things. We won't care too much about them until we pull them, but just so that you're aware, we're going for the standard and uh, slash easy. Um, and we wanna go this route just for the, fun, for the fun of it. I also wanna try to actually have somewhat of a chance. When they even say standard and easy, it still is not easy. Like this game still comes back to get you, uh, mainly because of the fact that you've got uh, a Mythos bag that's built to destroy you. Uh, so that's covered. The other thing we want to mention is when you're actually starting a turn uh, on a location that's got the lock key here uh, on it. In other words, it's the first time you've been there, you actually get automatically to flip it over and explore it. Uh, so this one here is a location. It's obviously our house. It came from our past scenario we played where we chose not to destroy the house. And it said, despite what happened, you just couldn't bring yourself to destroy your home. And that's exactly it. We weren't going to do that. I also see some, what the heck? To me, that looks like there's some creep up in the window on the balcony there. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is somebody up there. Um, and again, this guy you can see in the bottom here also lets you know where you can link to. So this is really important when it comes to moving around the game. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, on my turn when I move, I can only move to this particular location and that just happens to be Rivertown, which is, as you can see by all of the uh, bottom layer locations it's actually uh, connected to, it's literally connected to almost everything in play. Uh, so it's our central point in the town. Uh, so the house can take us there and then from there we can go pretty much wherever we want. So we get to flip this over at the beginning and our house here now has a shroud value and of course a clue value. So our house, it also says when a ghoul, when the ghoul priest spawns, spawn it here instead of its normal location. Uh, and then it says draw one card and gain one resource. Um, now this one says force when the ghoul priest spawns. Now, from what I understand, if I remember 100% correctly from the previous video, I have to grab my notes here because it's been a little bit. Um, yes. Okay. So what's going to happen is, uh, as of right now, the ghoul priest wasn't killed. If I remember correctly from our previous, our house was still hand, uh, our house was still standing but the ghoul priest is still alive. So from my understanding, he's in the deck. If he happens to come out of the encounter deck at some point in time, he's going to start at the house and then come after us. So it's going to cause us some a little bit of grief. Uh, so that's a forced action. Uh, that only happens when the ghoul priest spawns. And of course, we've got an action here that says draw one card and gain one resource, limit one per turn. So we can choose to do that as an action. That's actually not bad. Uh, now we've got a shroud value here of two and a clue of one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a clue token here and we're going to put it down here as something that we can grab equal to that. Uh, we just need a two or higher on our check in order to uh, actually end up um, uh, being able to get that. So we can take our three actions now. Well, the very first thing to do is to take a look at our actions and decide what we want to do. We've also got a decent hand of things uh, in terms of some, you know, we actually have quite a, a, quite a few decent items in play. Uh, the Elder Sign makes the most sense in terms of uh, playing it and paying for resources to um, maybe play a card. So that might be a worthwhile. It says like play an event or asset card uh, from your hand. Um, fast cards do not cost an action to play. So in this case, what we could do is we could play the Elder Sign, really. We play this here and it goes uh, on to Roland Banks. It's going to cost him two resources uh, based on this. So two of his resources are gonna disappear. Um, but hey, that's not bad because now his sanity uh, take is nine and our health is nine. That's a really good boost, uh, especially at the beginning of the game. That eliminates one of our three actions. And then we've got a few other ones we can take. So this is really only good when we're hurt. We don't need it right now. Dodging's useless at this point. Hyperweightness essentially useless. And then this is max uh, per one skill test. There are some benefits here uh, if we decide to do something. The one thing I think I'm going to do this term that would make the most sense is obviously go after uh, the one clue that's available at our house. We might as well go for it. Uh, in order to do that, we have to investigate our location. So that's something that we're allowed to uh, go ahead and attempt to do. And as such, if we go ahead and we want to uh, investigate our, our location, if I remember 100% correctly, and I do, I'm kind of, oh, where is it here? Uh, investigate. I just want to make 100% sure that I don't botch this. I'm pretty sure you're using your, um, your, well, no, no, I don't know. 
I'm forgetting. It's been a bit, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see here. Cover, play, evade, move, fight. Where is it? Uh, here we go. Draw, activate, investigate. Sorry about that, guys. Um, move. I want to make sure that I get the right one here. Investigate. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it is, in fact, the intellect. Of course it is. I'm sorry about that. So we are going to go ahead and use the intellect to try to do this. Now, as of right now, I just have a three. Uh, now, in order to pass this check, I need it to be higher uh, than the shroud value that's on the actual house, which is a two. So, right now we're not doing too bad, but the risk is when I pull my check from the Mythos bag, which is right here, things could go south real fast. So, um, I'm kind of happy with the three, but I could do something to boost it. I do have that hyper awareness card. This could help guarantee that we get the clue. Uh, the only downside with that would be, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna resource. Uh, let me see here. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna spend it. So I'm gonna spend this card, and what I'm gonna spend it for is this up uh, top ability here, which is gonna add another intellect, giving me a total of four. Um, so I'm using this as part of my check. So this would end up going in my discard pile, which I'll now just kind of put here to the side. So it's gonna be discarded. I'm up to a four and I just need to ensure that I either equal the shroud value or go higher than it. I'm gonna go into the Mythos bag here. We're gonna hope for the best. See if we can come up with the right chip. Zero, look at that, so we got it. We didn't even really need to spend it, but who knows, right? Things can go so sometimes. So uh, our investigation was successful, so we gained the clue, that's awesome. So we get to put the clue in Roland's area. And we're one clue away from potentially being able to uh, reveal a cultist in this gigantic city of Arkham that's hiding. Uh, all these cultists are hiding in amongst here and we gotta figure this out. Uh, so that's not bad, two successful things. Got the other sign on, got our clue from the house. And now to be totally honest with you, I just don't know whether we need to really be at the house anymore. I could use the draw one card and gain one resource, limit one per turn. That might not be a bad idea. I'd, I'd also, yeah, that could, that could be, that could be perfect, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna gain my resource back that I spent, or one of them that I spent anyway, uh, and then I'm gonna take a card, we'll see what we get. So we got Vicious Blow, that sounds nice. So a really nasty looking card. It's a practice card, and it's considered a skill. It does give me a boost uh, in terms of combat if I decide to use it that way, or it says if the skill test is successful during an attack, that attack deals plus one damage. So this is something that's really, really hand handy if I'm using this for an attack, which you would, and then you get the extra damage. So this could be really handy to going after a nasty enemy. Uh, so that's good. So that's essentially it. That's the end of the, in terms of round sequence anyway, uh, that would be the end of the investigator phase and we move to the enemy phase. Now the enemies with a hunter keyword move toward the nearest investigator. We know because we didn't have a mythos phase that doesn't exist. So we don't have to worry about that right now. The enemy phase is gonna kick on. So it says enemies with, oh, I just read that. Each engaged enemy attacks if available, no such thing. Now we come to upkeep. So we're set actions. So we're gonna go ahead and flip mini cards over. Now one thing that I'm kind of poor at doing and I apologize for, I probably won't do this then I'm playing solo, but normally when you're playing the game, you flip this over, it goes to the grayscale side of things and it's kind of grayed out, grayed out you can see, just to say that your turn is done. But because I'm playing solo, it, it's just unnecessary. There's nobody else waiting around for me uh, or waiting to go. So it's, it's a signal to other players that your turn is done. I like it, but it's not a, a useful thing currently when we're talking about uh, solo play. So I usually just skip that and, and, and don't do that myself. Uh, so that's good. Ready all exhausted cards. We don't have any. Each investigator draws one card and gains a resource. So look at that guys. Already before the missiles phase even gets a chance to roll. We're back to five. We also get to pull a new card. So we'll pull this one. And hey, we got the beat cop. The beat cop. This is the good one too. So if you'll notice in the top left corner, there's two pips. So this is the beat cop that we actually upgraded and added into our deck last game, you get an extra combat when he's in play. As you can see, it fills a uh, body slot from what I understand here. And there are limitations like most games about how, what type, uh, how many of those you can actually have and play at once. Uh, and this guy here, uh, it also has that lightning bolt symbol there. And you can see that from uh, from this right here, it references and said those lightning bolts or that rotational symbol says card abilities do not cost an action to activate. So essentially they just happen based on the card text. So this for instance can happen if I decide to exhaust the B-Cop 
and, and deal a damage to it, deal one damage to an enemy location. So he can go into play and again be somebody who can suck up damage. Uh, he also gives me three plus two. This could be really good, being that these are two totally different things. That could really beef me up at the top of the scenario. That's really good. So this is something that's gonna be uh, a card I wanna get into play. Now in order to get that into play, I gotta play four resources, but hey guys, we've got five. So this might be one of the luckiest starting situations I think I've ever run into so far playing this game because uh, I've played the very first core scenario through quite a few times and I don't think I ever had a nice opening hand like this. So this is sweet. Uh, we've, we've got a nice lineup of stuff. We're also really set here, so who knows what'll happen. So what I'm gonna do here is technically as of right now, uh, you, you do your last check, which is each investigator checks their hand size and you discard down to eight cards. I've only got five, so there's no, there's no need for that. Uh, and then the, you start the next round. So this is where the next round would start. I think this is a good place to stop. I'd like to kind of make sure that when I move forward with things, uh, we're, we're within a round. I'd like to try to keep it to that. I don't know if we'll be able to get one or two rounds per video going forward. It just depends on how crazy complex things get as we go. I'm gonna try to see if I can stick two into one video, uh, but what we may have to do one and just do shorter ones just to keep a clean cut. Uh, but I'd like to ensure that uh, each video is around at least, if not two. And, uh, and also that I explain things and you guys can understand my, my method of madness. So anyway, hope you guys uh, like the video. Uh, this one didn't go too, too crazy, but you know what's coming next and that's that mythos phase. And we love that, right? No, we don't. Uh, the mythos phase is up here. It's gonna be pouring out some nastiness into this environment. Uh, we gotta get out of our house because we have that forced action here that says, when that ghoul priest decides to show up, he is gonna show up at the house and he's gonna be causing us grief so we don't wanna be there. But anyway, got the setup all done. We've got through our first round. I hope you guys uh, are excited, as, as excited as I am, to get back into this game. It's been a while uh, and I can't wait to keep going. I got so much other stuff uh, on, the, on the go at the moment and you guys will be more than happy. So anyway, until the next time guys, hope you enjoy. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see and you wanna see more and feel free to subscribe if you haven't and you just stumble on the channel. Until the next time guys, keep on rolling solo.